In this video, we're going to replace the front and rear disc brakes on this 2016 Holden Captiva LTZ. Okay, so just an overview of the tools you'll need. Obviously, a pair of gloves is useful. Um, you'll need replacement brake pads, some brake lubricant, pad lubricant, um, brake cleaner, a drip tray to um, catch all the bits, um, I'll use some buckets and stands to rest the caliper on, or you could use zip ties, it's up to you. Um, I've got a oral syringe which is used to drain the brake fluid from the filler. Um, the brake pad clamp which will push the pads, the pistons back in. Um, uh, socket sets, the 10mm for that little bolt on the rear to hold the cable. Uh, that one is a 14 and a 17mm spanner for the actual bolts on the caliper. Um, these sockets, uh, that's a 22, that's a 24, they were just used for rams inside the piston. Stanley knife, a impact wrench um, with a 19mm socket um, and a, also a torch is handy too. Okay, so we're gonna replace the brake pads and the parts we're using um, are Bendix brand, uh, four wheel drive SUV. The part number for the front is uh, DB1850 4WD. Um, there's another part number on there too, um, T22285, um, and it specifically says on here um, Chevrolet Captiva Holden Captiva. So that's for the front and then for the rear, uh, the box feels slightly lighter. That is a DB1862 four wheel drive. Um, and there's some information on here. So it's used by other cars too, um, BMW, M5, M6, Chevrolet Captiva and Holden Captiva and Hyundai Terracan. So what I'll need to do first is um, jack up the car and put that onto axle stands. Um, I just need, need to move the position of it in the garage just so there's room on each side to get the jack in um, and then I'll get back onto it. Okay, so the jacking points on the Captiva, if you're using the, the factory jack that comes in the back of the car, um, this little ridge here on the seam is where you would fit it. Um, you can see in the past, this whole section here is dented in, um, obviously on a mechanics hoist. They've put the bar here, that's the bottom of the chassis rail. That would be more secure, possibly somewhere at the front too. All right, so what we need to do next is put the brakes into service mode. Um, the reason why you need to do that, because the rear brake pads are what hold the handbrake in place. So the way you do that, turn the ignition on to the on position, but don't start the vehicle. Then just turn it back, put the handbrake, foot on the brake, put the handbrake off, but hold down the button for about 15 seconds. Um, you'll hear the handbrake, um, the, the motors in the rear do their noise when they, the same as when you put the handbrake on and off. But then now when I let go of the button and press down again, you'll hear the motors moving again and then that's the mining all the way fully in. So now it's in service mode. Okay, so the vehicle's now up on jack stands, um, all of the wheels uh, off the ground so what we need to do now is just um, I'll do one side at a time um, and then put it all back together so obviously the front left and right will just be mirror images the same with the rear the rear will be different to the front though and what we'll need to do first is just take off the wheel okay so what we need to do now is uh, remove the caliper so we can get to the actual pads. The pads are just in here. And we need to loosen this bolt, loosen the corresponding bolt down the bottom there. Once those are off, we can pull out the bolts. This whole caliper will move off the fittings and that will allow us to get the brake pads out. Um, just be careful of this hydraulic hose we don't want to damage that. I'll get some cable ties so I can um, hook it up onto the, at the top of the springs 
um, just so this isn't just hanging on the ground on its own. That's starting to turn. Um, I'm going to need a spanner to hold the nut on the other side there. So that span is a 17 mil. The actual socket here is a 14 mil. So I'll just loosen it up and then do the bottom as well. So when you get these pads out, there's a couple of shims at the top and bottom. Um, I was going to leave the shims there for now. I just want to get the pads out. And just to make sure they're, we don't lose track of the position they're in, so we can match up and make sure the new ones go in the right spots. You can see... Uh, we're not completely um, depleted of brake surface, but um, they needed a change anyway. Okay, so depending on the type of car, this is like a general thing depending on what vehicle you're using. Sometimes the pistons um, need to be wound back in. It's usually with the rear brakes. I haven't looked at them yet, so we have to wait and see. Um, a tool like that can do it. There's some um, pins on this tool, and then obviously the hole you put in your um, 3 8 inch um, socket driver. Um, and then you have to actually rotate the pad and wind it back in that way. Um, so that these front ones, a tool just like this would be sufficient to press each of them in. Um, before I do that, I will put one of the old pads. Um, I'll try use, actually using that because that will um, just protect it and not damage anything because these are going in the bin anyway. Um, you don't have to do that. You could actually just um, put that tool in there like that and start winding. Um, I'll figure that out in a second. Um, the other thing too, I'll open the bonnet up just so we can check the brake fluid level because that may rise too high and overflow because we're um, compressing the fluid. All right, so I just opened up the new packet just to make sure they um, physically look like they're the right size. So they seem okay. Obviously the only difference between the pads, um, the one that's on the inside of the disc has this metal pin here. Um, what actually happens is that will scrape on the rotor when your brake pads are at their absolute minimum. That's the purpose of that. Okay, another thing we can do is just use a socket. I've got a 24mm socket. I'm just going to put that in there to fill up the gap. Um, obviously that's going to spin on the top of the socket, so if it's one of your expensive tools, I wouldn't suggest doing it this way but that's up to you what you want to do but that that will work that'll allow me to um wind it all the way in but just do it a bit at a time just make sure it's centered and drive that piston back in
All right, so they're both um, wound in now. Um, I was expecting when, when you wind one in, when you push this second one in, I thought that this one might pull itself out again, but no, it didn't. So they're just both wound in okay. Um, the next thing, um, these pins here, they that boot is sort of on there nice and sealed. So if that boot is split, then you may need to take all these apart and re-grease them and replace the boots. But they move nice and freely. So they're not sort of exposed by like some earlier model or cars are um, so I'm not going to take these apart and change put any grease in them I'm going to leave them as they are um, these shims I will put a bit of uh, brake grease on these parts here so any part we have metal and metal coming in contact which normally moves that's where we want to put the grease but I'll just clean it all down first with some brake cleaner I've got a drip tray underneath So the lubricant I'm putting using is this um, Bendix ceramic high performance synthetic lubricant and it's, this is designed for brake parts where you have moving parts. So it's any part where there's metal and metal contact we're just going to apply some to that. Um, I have to be a bit stingy with this because this is the only packet I've got left. Um, but you may get around with not using this but um, I'd like to put some on. So I'll just do that and then I'll do the other side in a second and then um, fit the new pads. So even though these are brand new pads, it's still advisable to um, just clean them down with brake cleaner just to get rid of any um, oil that may be on there, any residue that we don't want there. Um, and then we just fit them. So don't have to let it dry because the fluid will evaporate. So this is the outside one. Um, the inner one has that metal clip on it. And then all we need to do is just fit them where they need to go. All right, so the next step now is pretty easy. We just need to get the caliper back on there. I'll just give that a bit of a clean down because I haven't done that yet. And then that's ready to fit back on. Just be careful of them um, pins because it's got to, you've got to compress them a little bit um, in order for it to fit. And then once you've done that, we're good to go. Um, you might want to put some Loctite on those doesn't look like it had any. I'll just do them by hand first and then we'll use the tool to tighten them up. All right, it's time now to tackle the rear. All right, so with the rear setup on this, um, I always thought the handbrake was controlled um, and it had the electric handbrake worked the um, actual pads on here but it, it, obviously there's a drum inside here the cables for the um, electric handbrake run into the back on the inside so there's obviously drum brakes inside the hub here so what I'll do first is just undo these bolts and just take the caliper off and see how we go Alright, just to make things a bit easier um, for when I take it off, I'm going to undo this bolt here, which is the clamp for the hose. It's just so I can move the caliper out of the way. Let's just get these pads out. So same as the um, the front, um, they will just slide straight out. Okay, so with the replacement pads, the way they package them, they put the inner ones in the one packet together. So they've got the extra metal clips. So you have to undo them. 
Um, so one will be for this side, one will be for the right side. And it will say on there, inner left, and on that one there, inner right. So make sure you get them the right way around. So I'll open these up and then just get the right ones for this side. All right, so the same as what I did for the front. I'll just give everything a nice spray down with brake cleaner just to get rid of any dust on those. And then just put some new grease. These again, um, the pins, the boots on there are nice and sealed. And there, the movement in there is still good. So they'll just be left. And then clean down the new pads. And I'll put some grease on here first. Alright, so that'll conclude the video. What I need to do now is just refit the tyres. Um, I'm going to do a tyre rotation at the same time. It's been 10,000 Ks since the last one. So once the tyres are refitted, I can lift up the car, take out the jacks, and then we are done. Alright, so I hope you find this video a bit useful. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for watching.